Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. All right, so this is the final video in the series. The piece de resistance, the big kahuna, the turkey, the gobbler, the main centerpiece. Now, this is a very controversial thing for a lot of people because everybody has their perfect way of cooking the bird. Here's the interesting thing about the turkey, okay? You have two different types of meat. You have white meat, which is very lean and dries out very quickly. It needs to be cooked at a temperature, safe temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you have the dark meat, which is you know more connective tissue. It's a little chewier. It's uh, it's got more fat in it, and so therefore it can be cooked longer. And actually, to be safe, we want it around 185, 190. It actually tastes better for me. That my 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 taste at around that because it's a little bit more rendered. It's not as as uh, slimy. I think it has like a slimy texture to it. So how do you have both those things happen at the same time? Alton Brown is a genius. He's a Food Network star. If you don't know who he is, uh, star of Good Eats. He came up with a method that I have adopted over my life, and I've told you about this for years on the actual show. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how I rub the turkey and prep the turkey. And I'm gonna show you how I use the Alton Brown uh, turkey triangle, I call the turkey bra, it's a turkey triangle method. And I will put a link in the description to the original video of Alton Brown's episode of Romancing the Bird from the Food Network. You can go ahead and check it out and watch it online. Um, if I can find it, I believe it's online. And uh, But I'll show you, it's all credit goes to Alton Brown, obviously, of uh, the Food Network star, who is, in my mind, has revolutionized the way that I actually cook turkeys. Everything, people talk about low and slow, and that, 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 put them in bags, and all this nonsense. People are crazy. The proper way to get a bird to stay moist and delicious is to cook it to the proper temperature. And I have this method that I use that was inspired by Alton Brown that is, for me, foolproof. You get two different meats at two different temperatures at the same time, and it cooks faster. All right, so we're starting off right now. Before you do anything, if you're going to follow along on this, go set your oven. Put the, bot the racks to the lowest part you can get of the oven and set your oven to 500 degrees. 500 degrees. Ripping hot. Let it get nice and hot in there, okay? So just get started there. Then we'll go over the ingredients of how I prep my turkey. Uh, I'll give you all the stuff that I use and, and rub it all down, and then we'll cook it, and I'll show you how it comes out. All right, so these are the ingredients for the rub. I got this from my Nana, and I've kind of adopted it on my own. Uh, real simple, a good oil. This is just vegetable oil, canola oil, something with a high smoke point because you're going to be putting this into a ripping hot 500-degree oven, whatever you can find. I'm just going to try it with vegetable oil. I always battle the smoke. It is what it is as far, as far as I'm concerned. Small price to pay for a great turkey. This is adobo seasoning. You can use garlic powder, but adobo seasoning, you can find it in usually in the uh, in the international aisle at your grocery store. It's um, made by Goya. That's what I use. They have salt in it, granulated garlic, uh, or oregano, black pepper, turmeric, depending on. You can get the kind that has no pepper in it. You can get the kind that has no salt in it. Um, but I use adobo seasoning. Then this is the the poultry seasoning, get it from Bell's, McCormick, whatever, it doesn't matter, you'll find it all over the grocery store. And this, of course, is the Portuguese allspice. No, I'm kidding, it's called, I call it the allspice, it's called pimenta moida. It's the crushed red pepper. And what we do is we basically put this all together into a mixture, like so, just dump it in. And you can dump this in, very simple. And then you dump this in, and you mix it all up, I'm gonna put some, brown pepper in there, just for a little extra stuff. And then I put a little extra salt because salt is good. And this is going to go, and I'll show you this, it's going to be rubbed all over the bird, inside the skin, under the skin, in the cavity. Um, and I'll show, it to that. I'll show that part to you right now. All right, so here we have, this is a very small bird. This is something you would probably not use this for Thanksgiving unless you have you know, a couple people. It's a 12 pound bird. This is what I call my quarantine turkey because I literally bought this at the grocery store at the beginning of the quarantine and was afraid that there wouldn't be any turkeys around, so I grabbed it. So <laughs> it was frozen in my chest freezer for quite some time, so I thought it out for this demonstration. So this is a 12 pound bird. Listen, m people wanna brine their turkeys. The only reason why I think you'd wanna brine a turkey is if you bought a fresh bird from like a poultry farm. Most birds today come with a salt solution already injected into them, which is basically what a brine is. And so the brine is already in it. So brining it twice is probably not a good idea. It's probably no point to it. So chances are, if you're like me, you buy a frozen bird, 
you might want to look at the packaging. It probably says it's packaged in a salt solution, which means it's already brined and will be juicy, so don't worry about it. So um, the first thing we do, again, like I said, Alton Brown's turkey triangle method. Let's go over to the foil. Now the foil is what's going to be the magic here. The foil is going to be used to cover the breast meat of the turkey so that it stays uh, nice and juicy and, and cooler than the rest of the bird so that the rest of the bird cooks to a higher temperature while the breast meat is protected because it's white meat, it's leaner, it doesn't have that layer of fat in it to protect it from the heat. So how do we do this? How do we make this into something that fits on the breast meat of this turkey? Well, this is what I do. This is, you know, you can make up your own definite, your own uh, method for this. You can even just scrunch it up on top of the turkey if you wanted to. That's fine too. So what I usually do to get it done, and it's always worked for me, is kind of, do remember those old ways that you uh, folded those notes back in school? Or the footballs, I used to remember, or origami, something like that. So what I do is I do that, and then I do this, and I fold it over this way. You can hack it, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? So you literally just follow this triangle shape. That's all you're looking to do, is keep the triangle shape, right? And it's good that it's nice and thick. It's substantial, and then boom. And then what you do is, bring the turkey over here, is you basically take this triangle and you pre-fit it, because when you're gonna put this on, it's gonna be real hot out of the oven. Side as well, kind of bend it over. And then look, I call the turkey bra. Look at that, see? And how, depending on how big a turkey is, you might want to use less foil, whatever it is, but that's nice and protected right there. So then what you do is you're not going to put this in the oven first. You're going to take this off. You know, so now it's pre-fitted. So that's ready to go. Leave it to the side. Now we're going to take this turkey and, uh, sorry if you can see the wire in the way, it's my microphone wire. But we're going to take this turkey and we are going to rub it down. So to prep the turkey for, for the oven, it's 500 degrees as we speak in the oven. What I do is I take the tips of the turkey and I fold it underneath it so they don't burn, because you don't want to use those. Right? Put it underneath there so it doesn't burn. These fold on to get to force it a little bit. And then what you do is you basically take your mixture that you just made with the poultry seasoning, the pimento muida, the adobo seasoning, you mix it all up. You pour it on the bird and you rub it liberally on the skin, on the wings, on the front, on the side, on the back. Right here, you just take your finger right in there, fingers in there, and rub it into this, right? And rub it in here. Everywhere you got surface, inside the cavity, everything. And the great thing about this too is that when it becomes drippings, it actually seasons your drippings as well. And so you have great gravy if you know how to make it. So then look, you want to get into the underneath of the skin as well. Look, see the skin has you got to separate it a little bit from the meat. And then what you do is you put your hand in there all the way down to the edge, down to the bottom, and you rub all the meat in there. And you, you take up more of the stuff, and you put it in there like this. And you rub it in. You separate the skin from the thing. Don't worry if you rip it a little bit, it's fine. All right, you make a little space. It's real messy. I mean, you're not getting staying clean with this. Okay, then you take the inside of the cavity, rub the inside of the cavity, rub it all around. What I do is to make this a big mass because we're not stuffing the turkey, is I take the two legs and I cross them and I tie them together. Again, ready? Go around here, like so, like this. Wrap it around, pull it across. Tie them together like this. slippery so you gotta do it any way you can and you tie it together right you just want this to be as tight as you can get it so that way when the thing is done it's cooks in one big mass rather than having loose parts all over the place that will cook in different ways so that's kind of the concept here is to have one big mass And there you go. Simple, right? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the bird now. This is very important. We're going to put it in a 500 degree oven. I don't know if you can see that. 500 degrees, yeah? 500. Okay. So 
right here, we're gonna take this bird, you want the legs, again, Alton Brown's method. The legs go in the back of the oven. It's the hottest part of the ovens in the back. The legs, the darker meat, the, the meat that can take the heat that you want rendered, goes to the back of the oven. This is gonna get a early brown skin, um, whack a dose of brown skin on this thing at 500 degrees for 30 minutes, okay? 30 minutes, so let's put it in there. We'll put it in the oven. Lowest part of the oven can get it. Oof, that's real hot, so be careful. Put it in all the way to the back as much as you can. Close it up. Set the timer for 30 minutes. And then when we come back, I'll show you what to do. All right, folks, This, these are some tools that are a must have for a turkey, a properly cooked turkey, because temperature is everything. All right, so this is what they call an insta thermometer, where you basically take this and you see, it's got the, the temperature gauge right there. My battery's dying, so I gotta change it. And this goes into the bird to determine what the temperature is at any point. So you can check the various spots and it goes and it, it, tests, the, it tests the temperature in various spots and there you go. Now, that's that's for after the fact, after it's cooked to make sure that everything's good. This is a, you know, basically you, this is a, a thermometer, a timer, a bunch of different things that you can use to actually put into the bird as it's cooking. So I just bought this probe. What happens is you turn this on, one of these handy dandy thermometers, and then you can stick this in here and this probe goes into the meat and stays there in the bird, in the coolest part of the bird. Be careful, you don't want to put it near the bone because the bone will give you a, a bad reading. But you put this in there and it, you can set a temperature. In this case, you want the white meat to be 165. So what I do is I, I take this and I program it to go, uh, an alarm goes off at 165. I stick this in the bird and I never open the oven until that thing says 165. And that temperature, um, and if you want to, you can take it out at 160 and let it rest, and it will go eventually carry over cook to 165. But 165 is a nice temperature. It's the safe temperature. Everything dies at that point. You stick it in this, and you don't open the oven. And because you don't open the oven, the heat stays in the oven, and the heat cooks the bird faster. That's why people who baste their birds or people who stuff their birds, you're elongating the cooking time. And the longer the time, the drier the meat. So you want to cook it in a short, amount of, a short amount of period of time as possible. This helps you do that because you can monitor the temperature of the meat the entire time. So this is kind of like a fancier one, uh, you know, more expensive. You don't need to get this. You can get a cheaper one of these. These are phenomenal to have. And you can do this. This will work for your roasts, pork, beef, whatever, anything you need. This will tell you what the temperature is. And if you look up the proper temperature of the various meats, it makes them taste better because you're not cooking them death. You're not making them dried out. So this is key, key, key tool for this turkey thing. So when we come up next, after the half an hour in the 500 degree oven, you will go ahead and I will show you what it looks like and then we're gonna put this in the turkey breast and cover it with the turkey bra. All right, we're heading down to the end of our timer here. As you can hear, I have my fan on because it does get a little smoky at 500 degrees, but it's I'm telling you it's worth it. All right, so the timer's done. 30 minutes has passed. I'll show you what it looks like. So here we have, ooh, steam in your glasses. See, look at the brown we got on this turkey. So I'm gonna take it out real quick. And we're gonna put in, well first we're gonna do is we're going to drop our oven temperature to 350. 30 minutes at 500, down to 350. Now, I take my probe and I want to look at, I don't know if you can get this shot, I wanna get the lowest temperature in the deepest part of the breast meat that I can find. So. I'll put the probe in there. It's at 91 degrees already. It's a small bird, so it cooks quickly. So what I do is I put it in, I kind of pull it out a little bit and see where the deepest part, the lowest temperature is in the bird. So you can you can poke around a little bit if you want to in here. See? Looks like you got like an 87, 86. That's good right there. You hold it right there. And then what we're gonna do is we'll put our foil triangle, the turkey bra, as I call it, inside uh, of this, and on, on top of this, excuse me, then back in the oven at 350 until this reads 165 degrees. All right, so we put the, like I said, we put the foil on, right? Cover the breast meat up. You know, the breast meat is white meat. It's very lean, you wanna protect it, All right? So we have the thermometer in, the foils on the breast meat. This is all dark meat. The, the thigh over there, dark meat. See how it's already starting to pull away from the bone? This is all gonna render out and it's gonna be beautiful. You're gonna actually wanna eat the drumstick because it's gonna be nice 
and rendered meat and it'll taste good it won't be dry but it won't be really rubbery either so take this 350 in the oven until this thermometer reads 165 degrees now Carryover cooking is a concept. I want to talk to you about this for a second. Carryover cooking is when things come out of the oven but continue to cook. So you may want to pull this out. I pull it out at 162 and then I let it rest. A turkey like this, you could let rest for like half hour, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, and it'll still be hot when you cook it. So you can you want to you want to cook your turkey a little early and then have it come out of the oven like an hour before you are actually going to cut it up and serve it, you'll be plenty warm. It's not going to get cold on you. So I'm going to pull this at 162, let it come up to like 165, 167. My family likes to have a little bit more well done meat. So I'll do that. So this is going back in the oven and then we take it out. We'll show you what the final product looks like. All right. We have the alarm. It's 162 degrees in the white meat of the turkey so let's open the oven and get a chance to check it out the big reveal of the turkey oh look at that now where's my other thermometer here it is hold on one second now i see you guys notice how the dark meat is nice and cooked and browned and beautiful and look at that beautiful so just as a test it usually works out just fine for me but let's just as a test we'll see we have our InstaRead thermometer here. Get it to work properly. Here we go. Just to make sure we have the proper temperature in the breast meat. We have yeah, 163, 160. That's perfect. And then what we'll do is we'll check out the dark meat. The dark meat should be about 185, 190. So this is the thigh now. You put in the thigh. See? Oh, it's even higher. It's even better. Put that in there. There you go. See, that's nice and rendered. You like it around there? It's hitting the bone, so it's going to be a little higher. So it's about 190. And so what you want to do now with this, so now you have two different, you have the dark meat that's nice and cooked to a perfect temperature. You have the white meat that's now 165. It will continue to sit there. It will rest. It will cook a little bit, a little bit more, probably five degrees. And all the juices that are all excited in there will redistribute back into the meat. You want to let this rest. You can let this rest for like an hour. Cover it with foil, let it rest for an hour. Um, just let it sit there. I mean, it can go that long, it's no problem. And it'll still be warm inside. And then we'll show you, I'll cut into it, and you can see, you'll be able to see how moist uh, the white meat is once we, uh, we cut into it. All right, so here's the bird. It's rested for like two hours for me. You don't have to leave it that long, but I like to do this because why not? Uh, first thing you do when you wanna carve a bird is you wanna take away the thigh and the, the drumsticks. What you do is you slice down a little bit like this, and then you actually push it down like that. And you can see, they should be able to see the ball joint of the actual thigh in there and pop it. Sometimes you push down on it enough, it should just pop out, it should just pop down. And then you can slice through this like that. And then boom, see? You get your thigh and your drumstick and you cut right in the middle there like this. And boom, look at that. Thigh, drumstick, look at that. Turkey drumstick, nice and rendered, beautiful. And then you can take off your wing here if you like a wing, but let me show you real quick this breast meat, 165 degrees. Usually what you wanna do, if you wanna take the whole breast off, you would what you would do is you carve underneath here and up through the bone like this way. And then what you do is you carve on the side of the keel bone like this, and you can take this whole thing off. Or if you want the more traditional, you just slice it. Get a real sharp knife, and you slice off pieces like that. Look at that. Look at that. Nice slices. Look at that, right? Is that nice and juicy? Look at that. Not dry. Nice and juicy. All right? Beautiful. Look at that. That's a properly cooked turkey breast. Not dry, not sawdust, 165 degrees, still hot after resting for two hours. You see that? Look at that. You hungry yet? And that's the bird, the most important part of the Thanksgiving dinner. And I'm telling you, the secret to a delicious, juicy bird is temperature, temperature, temperature. Forget flipping it upside down, putting it in a bag, putting, you know, basting it. Basting it's a waste of time. Don't do it just cook it to the proper temperature. 165 white meat, 185 dark meat, and you're good to go. Thank you, I'm so, you know what I'm thankful for this year? You, 
I'm thankful for you every year. Thank you for listening to me on WPRO. Thanks for watching these videos, which are weird. And I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Let me know, in the, either in the comments or on the air, when we do our big show the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, if you tried any of, the, any of these, uh, these recipes and or methods, then let me know what you think of them, okay? And don't forget, in the description, the original video from Alton Brown on how to do the whole thing with the turkey triangle, turkey bras, I call it. And uh, enjoy yourself. Thank you for watching. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and I'll see you on the radio.